All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel today. Today's video is gonna be slightly different. I was gonna talk about something else today, but then as I was walking into the studio, I really got the impression that I need to talk about this topic instead, and that is around the economy. And the reason why is because I think if I don't talk about it, a lot of people are gonna get fooled and they're gonna get caught out. So we've just had all of the data release for the UK and the USA. So we know what's happening with inflation. We also know because of previous releases about unemployment and how the economy's doing and, and things like this. And the beauty of economics and finance is that you can read the numbers, you can read the statistics, and that gives you the information. How is it that I've been able to be incredibly accurate with my forecast for the last two years now around the economy and around finance and around investing? How have I done so well with my investments? And those of you in the private community have viewed this and you can see my investments. Well, it's because I'm not looking at all of this emotion. When President Biden comes on like he did this week and said, wow, guys, you know, this is the strongest economy we're going into. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be amazing. And you know, all this other stuff. Sorry for the uh, butchered American accent there. Uh, you, you know, you keep seeing all this stuff all the time and we're hearing it from the UK as well and the European Union. So in the UK, they don't, you know, they don't quite talk like that. It's more very reserved, but they have been coming out with all this stuff as well. Oh, wow, the economy, um, although we may be looking like a recession, there's good news. Oh, yes, indeed, there's good news that we may avoid this recession. Uh, and here's why. And I listened to it all. But all I keep hearing are emotional reasons and it's stories. I mean, a lot of these guys are fantastic storytellers and they're great at spinning this PR. But again, as I always say, forget about the emotions, forget about what the media tells you and just look at the numbers and the statistics and it will tell you really everything you need to know. At the time of release of this video, we'll also see the FOMC meeting come out. So that's the Federal Reserve. Jerome Powell will outline the next stage of the plan for the US economy. Now, this is the last time I'm gonna guess what the rate rise will be, or reduction. Um, because every single one I've got correct and I want to end on a winning streak because I don't know what's going to happen after this rate rise. So I'm going to say that this rate rise today as this video comes out will be 0.5% to the federal funds rate. So this is the interest rate for the United States. I also believe at the next Bank of England rate rise will also be 0.5%. The reason I think that, because I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, we could still see a 0.75% or that's it, we might not see any more rate rises and it's, you know, it's all over now, we're gonna, the economy's gonna return and, and the like. The reason I don't think that is because, yes, we are now in a period of disinflation. That means not deflation, it just means that inflation is coming down a little bit year on year. And this is the other thing. We, we're seeing all the media outlets celebrating this week, and they're celebrating that inflation has come down by this tiny, tiny amount in the USA, UK, Eurozone. But what they're not really saying is that we're still at 40 year highs for inflation. So they're celebrating the worst economic data in inflation in decades. Because why? Why do they keep doing this? It's because they're trying to lead you. They're trying to get you all together to take certain actions as we've kept seeing over and over again. So they're trying to lead you in a certain direction, this hope to try and give you hope in the hopes that you'll continue spending and doing all these other things. But that isn't really gonna work this time around as we go into 2023, because it's not just about all those fundamentals, it's also about how much money is available. And the bottom line is there just isn't the disposable income available. Households haven't got that money. Yes, wages are starting to go up, we're seeing that now, but ha people are having to fight for it. Unions are having to fight for these higher wages. So households haven't got this money. 
And what they keep trying to do, the economists and the government, is they try and give you the inflation, but they strip out food and energy. Why do they do that? Well, it's because food and energy are the highest aspects of inflation. So if they strip that out and tell you, oh, look, inflation's only actually five or six percent, really. It's just that the food and the energy is, is pushing it up to 10 percent, for example. And I've actually got the exact statistics here. So the UK, 10.7 percent. So they, they want you to celebrate 10.7 percent inflation. Baffling. Um, USA, 7.1 percent inflation. But what was USA food? That was up 10.6 percent and energy was up 13.1%, but that was varied. Some energy was up 10%, some was over 15%. So it depends on your energy usage and what you use. Are you using gasoline? Are you using heating oil? Are you using natural gas? It all depends for each household how big your inflation rises are based on the food you consume and the energy you use. So overall, things are super, super bad. They're, they're absolutely atrocious because of these higher interest rates as well now, at a time when usually what the central banks would do is they would loosen their monetary policy at this point. They would bring down interest rates, they would do more quantitative easing, which is more currency creation, in order to stimulate the economy. But they can't do that. So instead, what they're doing is they're trying to get people to have, you know, this hopeism, I guess we can call it, or hopeism, I think I heard someone else say, which is a good one. So they're trying to get people to use their savings and oh, invest into the stock market and, and all these other things when it's just not going to work that way this time around. This time is, um, the similarities with other recessions and other crises but this time is very different. And if you're kind of following along, I do have a macro course. You can find the link in the description below. Uh, it's also a stock market course predominantly, but it explains all of this and explains market cycles going back a hundred years. Uh, so you can actually see all of these different, different patterns. But uh, truly understanding macroeconomics is crucial for everyone, whether you are just a regular person with a normal job or, or whether you are a full-time investor, it's so crucial to understand macroeconomics because then you won't get caught out and tricked by the media and what the governments are saying. So they're kind of relying then on people to use their savings. Oh yeah, use your savings and you know continue to spend and all these other things. But the problem is the savings rate has absolutely crashed and the debt levels have climbed. I did a video on this just last month. So people have actually already spent through a lot of their savings and now they're getting into debt. And it is as a result of the higher food and energy costs. And this is why governments don't wanna pay attention to this or put any focus on it because they have caused these things. They are the ones that are saying no more uh, drilling, no more natural gas, um, no more energy from Russia, cheap energy from Russia, only expensive energy, uh, because this will help to uh, create demand destruction on energy usage, because they want you to bring your energy usage down. But what about food? Again, it's the same principle. Where did the fertilizers come from? They came from Russia, uh, which are now a, a lot are banned, so you can't actually import the fertilizers. And it doesn't help that the government is giving subsidies and encouraging farmers to actually stop farming, i.e. destruction of more food. Uh, Netherlands, destruction of 3,000 farms. They want 3,000 farmers off the land to build something there. In fact, I've got to do that video still. It's on my desk, ready to go. But if you thought the inflation was bad in the USA, it's a lot worse in the UK. And that's because the UK is, I guess we can say it's further ahead than the US in terms of the depth of the recession. So UK at 10.7%, but it was 11.1% um, the month before. Food inflation in the UK, 16.5%. And we won't even go into the energy because we've covered all the energy before. The UK is paying astronomical prices for energy. The other thing that is being celebrated is the unemployment rate in UK, EU, USA. Again, this is a mistake because unemployment is a lagging indicator. It doesn't begin with the unemployment. The unemployment comes later 
as the companies start to lose money, as they start to struggle, they lay off the biggest expense and that is staff. And of course, staff is you, it's you know all of us uh, who are consumers, we earn money and then we spend that money, that goes to taxation, the spending goes to companies and energy and food. This is where the problem comes in because this runs into employment scarring. And I don't think we're too far off now seeing these higher unemployment rates. I do believe that the UK will be first because we've got this, we've had this jump now from inflation in goods to it's now going to services and it's being uh, very much driven by wages. So the wages as they're being pushed up are pushing more inflation onto the services. Now, everyone that I'm listening to, including economists, um, Bank of England, Federal Reserve, everyone, governments, they're all saying that peak inflation has now passed and that's it, inflation is over. But I wanna just bring your attention back to my theory that I came up with before. And that is that I think that we could have a perfect storm emerge in 2023 where central banks go back to creating more QE, so that's more currency creation. And I think you could potentially, I'm not saying this for a fact, but you could actually see a second wave of inflation coming through the economy. As everyone's celebrating and thinking, oh yeah, things are getting better, inflation's coming down, they're probably gonna start to lower these um, rates. I don't know exactly when, perhaps it will be late 23, mid 2023, who knows at this point, I'm not gonna make a forecast on that until I have more data and I see what happens as we go into January, February time. But I think that this could catch out the governments and the central banks because they're not seeing it and they're not anticipating it. So if they do go back to more currency creation at a time when wages are spiking, at a time when we've still got supply chain breakdown, so we're gonna have to have more costs, more material costs, this will have to run into inflation later on. And if that happens, they're gonna reverse a lot of the repair work that they do in 2023 because they're going to have to then go back to raising rates again and go back into another tightening cycle. Now there's just a couple of things I want to show you on the shared screen today and the first one this just came out last week uh, was this big big report talking about how the economy is um, recovering and um, overall the policy response was strong and effective in promoting a rapid economic recovery. From a macroeconomic standpoint, the economy has largely healed. Again, this is a complete lie. And the groups that experienced the largest losses in the recession have recouped a substantial share of their losses. Again, this is a huge, huge lie because the groups that did lose in the recession, they're, they're they've gone out of business. The businesses have collapsed. The mom and pop businesses have collapsed. A lot of the sectors that were hit the hardest, um, you think like retail and travel, for example, and just all, all these different you know, restaurants and things like that, they, I can guarantee you they haven't recovered. It's going to take years for them to recover the losses that they took. Now, the other chart that's a huge lie that keeps getting put out all the time is this one. Uh, and it says pandemic recession much deeper, but shorter than the Great Recession. So what they're saying is, oh, the way the central banks dealt with it, where we had this dip here, you can see where it dipped right down. They, um, they did the right thing and they got us out of the recession. Well, no, they didn't do the, the necessarily the right thing. What they did was they created a load of new currency. 30% or more of all US dollars were created in that time period, which then added to these record levels of inflation, which all it's done is stolen your money, your savings and your wages. That's what they did. So they bailed themselves out. They didn't help the economy at all. Now, the next thing that a lot of these media outlets are talking about, so they're blaming all of the food and drink inflation, i.e. 16.4%. And remember, that's only year on year that doesn't take into account the year before where we had huge numbers and the year before. So food inflation is actually up by extortionate amounts of uh, money or percentage, we could say, but they just don't wanna say that. So what are they blaming it on? They're saying it's driven by more expensive bread. And then if you get into the articles more, they blame it all on uh, Russia. 
and Ukraine. Well, think about this. How can bread, just bread, one small item, add 16.4% to food inflation right across the country? Do you realize how many items go into that CPI basket, the inflation basket on food? It's not bread. I mean, bread would have to have gone up by a million percent or something ridiculous, a hundred thousand percent in order to bring up everything else to 16%. You see, they keep coming out with all this stuff because they think people are stupid and they just assume that you can't think for yourself and you're just going to believe whatever you read. Now, unfortunately, that is true for some people. They will believe whatever they see on screen or whatever the the person behind the, the camera, the news reporter says, but it doesn't mean it's true. And if you remember last, was it last month or the month before, I covered this uh, story in absolute detail where I said that all the UK pension plans almost collapsed. And I got a lot of abuse over that and people were saying, oh, he's lying and there's no way or the pension plans almost collapse and, and all this sort of stuff. But hey, I'm, I'm used to it now. Well, look what just came out. Bank of England calls for urgent global action after the near collapse of UK pension funds. So look, this just came out yesterday, December the 13th. So this was Andrew Bailey that actually has released this report, the head of the Bank of England. So he's saying there's a need for urgent international action to reduce risks in the non-bank finance. Now, this is exactly what happened in 2008. It was the shadow banking sector that caused the whole uh, 2008 Great Recession because they weren't being managed correctly and they were doing all of these bundles of mortgages, if you remember my video on that, and they were AAA rating and, and all that. There's a great movie on this, by the way. It's called The Big Short with Michael Burry. Uh, fantastic movie, but it explains exactly what happened. And if you remember my video on it, I said they haven't outlawed this stuff, really. They haven't changed it. Yeah, they've changed the rules, but all that these um, finance companies did was they just changed the terminology of these bundles. I think they changed it to a... Uh, gosh, I'm going back two and a half years here, but a CDO, a collateralized debt obligation. So that's all they did, or, or a BTO, bespoke tranche opportunity, is one of those. But that's all they did. They just changed it, put a different classification on, and they've continued on with this practice. So you've still got this shadow banking sector, and you've still got all of these um, malicious players going on. Look what happened with the pension funds. Look what happened with BlackRock, with these margin calls. And then who rushes in to buy all of the, the bonds and the, you know, all these assets from the pension funds when they were liquidating? It's all just a big game that these big financial players are playing. And a lot of it is just a massive scam. They shouldn't be allowed to steal people's money, pension money and other things. But that's what's happening. I guarantee you, if you check your your pension, you probably went down this year if you're in the UK because of the whole scandal that went on. But I think that's probably enough for today's video then. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to check out my macro and stock market course if you would like to take greater control of your own finances. But other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber. Uh, take care. God bless. And I'll see you tomorrow.